Today we're going to talk about slow flight. We're going to look at why you might need to fly slow, how to get into and out of slow flight, and how it affects the airplane. This video is a follow-up from the previous video that I did on pitch and power. So if you haven't seen that one yet, I'd highly recommend watching it first because a lot of the concepts I talk about in that video are directly relevant to this video. The main reason you might want to fly slow is when you're coming in on final for landing. You don't want to be coming in too fast because you might blow by the runway and you don't want to be going too slow because you could stall only a few hundred feet from the ground and that's never a good thing. So I'm going to jump into the cockpit right away and we'll demonstrate how slow flight affects the airplane. Alright, so I'm traveling at around 2,000 feet at the moment. I'm practicing here just to make things a little bit easier. Generally speaking, when you are flying in slow flight, it's because you're coming in for a landing. But because there's a lot of other stuff going on at the same time during landing, I prefer to practice slow flight separately from a uh, landing. And then when it comes time to actually do the landing, the slow flight will just come to you naturally and you can focus more on the landing aspect. So we're traveling at around 120 kilometers an hour right now, and we'll be looking to slow down to around 65 kilometers an hour which is about five or so kilometers an hour above the stall speed of the Cub. If you're flying in a different plane, obviously you'll have to look up what the stall speed of that plane is and figure out what speed you're going to need to fly at. I like to give myself a little bit of wiggle room above the stall speed just in case I screw something up. I don't apply enough power and we end up falling out of the sky a little bit. It's always a little better to have that little bit of wiggle room. Slow flight is usually done in the landing configuration, which for the Cub means we need to extend the flaps fully. Again, if you're flying a different airplane, you'll have to look up what the procedure is for that plane. Alright, so we are pretty much ready to enter slow flight. So I am just a wee bit above the flap extension area for this aircraft, which you can see in the white section of the airspeed indicator here. So I'm just going to reduce power a little bit more. And now I am going to hold the attitude by using some back pressure on the stick. Now I'll apply the first level of flaps. There we go, and airspeed is coming down a lot. So I'll apply the last level of flaps. And the airspeed is going to drop a lot. And at this point, I'm actually going to have to add a little bit of power so that we don't stall and maintain altitude. We lost a little bit of altitude there, but that's okay. I think my power needs to be about there. There we go, that's level flight and holding airspeed around 65. So now I'm going to trim the plane out to hold this attitude. So I'm just going to apply some nose up trim. There we go, the plane is trimmed out for straight and level flight. So at this point we are ready to have a look how the plane is responding differently. So if I go to the external view and we look from the side, we'll see that the plane is in a nose-up attitude. That's because we're flying a lot slower, the wings need to be deflected that much more to deflect enough air to keep us aloft. If we added any more pitch-up attitude at this point, we would probably end up stalling the airplane because we are so close to that stall speed. Any more pitch and the angle of attack will be too big for these wings to fly. Alright, so I will head back into the cockpit now. So what we're going to do now is we're going to start a very slow turn to the left. When you're flying slow, the controls are a lot more sluggish. So you want to use very little input to make those, those slight changes. So I've really applied very little aileron to get us turning. The other thing is because we're flying so slowly, I'm not going to try and do any turns at high levels of bank, like 20 or 30 degrees. You're at much greater risk of losing altitude because your wings are already generating so little lift. Alrighty, so I'm just gonna straighten back out here. All right, so let's clean up the airplane and get back to a normal cruise speed. So normally you would add a little bit of power before doing this, so I will add power to around 4000 RPM and I'm going to raise the first level of flaps. And we see the airspeed accelerates rather quickly. At that point I'll reduce, remove all flaps. Here we go. 
And now the plane is back at our airspeed that we were at before, so I'll reduce power. Here we go, and now all I have left to do is just trim the plane for this new attitude. So if we were to go look at the external view now, and we look from the side, you can see the nose is pitched down a lot more than it was before. Which makes sense because there's more oncoming air hitting the wings, which means it's easier to stay in the air. So we saw how to enter and exit slow flight. It's really just a matter of getting into the landing configuration and reducing power and maintaining altitude to fly nice and slow. We saw how the plane is affected by slow flight. The controls are a lot more sluggish and any input we make needs to be done a lot more smoothly than it would be otherwise. And finally, we saw how to return to a normal cruise speed. So I hope that was useful to you. If you have any questions, please make sure to leave them in the comments below. Otherwise, please make sure to like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you again next time.